Hey everyone, Nipex plays here. Due to the recent changes to Shivana, I think dragons are actually a good bit better. The meta is actually a lot um, more friendly to dragons now, and I think dragons are in a pretty good spot overall. I've had a few successful win rates, like winning five in a row or so, uh, a few different days with dragons, and I want to show you guys the dragon deck I've been using. I think it's pretty good, so let's get into it. All right, so dragons. All right, my take on dragons might be a bit different than most people's. I'll, I'll go ahead and say that. So I like this card a lot. I think Herald of Dragons, uh, Dragon Allies cost one less, is one of the main synergy points of dragons. I feel like outside of this card, there aren't too many ways to use the dragon, I guess, uh, title or tag or whatever, uh, successfully. So I like this card a lot, and I just want to go out of my way and say that this card is important in my deck, and it's built around this somewhat. Uh, one of the main things dragons could do is that on turn 7 you play Eclipse Dragon, and on turn 8 you play Aurelian Soul. And uh, that's really strong. Other decks can do that that aren't dragons, but this is more synergistic. And also, I've had... <laughs> I know this is like a crazy high roll hand, but I actually played this on turn 6, uh, the second game I played this deck. Uh, I opened Triple Hair of the Dragon, one of these, and one of these. Uh, the first card I'll say I don't play, uh, just before we get into it, is um, Dragon Chow. I found this card, it's cute, and you can run it, but a lot of times I have it, I wanna, I'm inclined to keep it, right? Because like you want to play on turn 1. And then I'm working with three less cards to make a consistent early game. I really want to open in this deck, Herald the Dragons on two, and then you go either Shivana or White Flame on, on three, because they're discounted, and then you play Screeching Dragon on four. That's one of the strengths of the deck to me in Dragons, is not only the Dragons themselves are like crazy strong, on you know, play the real cost for them, like four or five, but they're still pretty good actually, but uh, playing this for four and playing this for three, I think is super strong. That's one of the main things I enjoy doing with dragons. Um, but yeah, a lot of times if you, if you keep this in your mulligan, you have a lower chance of seeing those combos or that opening because, um, you're mulliganing in a way where you keep this and then your extra hand can be bricky. So anyways, the main thing is going to be like, you know, Herald into early game curves. That's what I like to do. Let's get into it though. All right. Three Jaguar Tenet. This card is absolutely amazing. Like so, so good. When I'm summoned, if you behold a dragon, grant me challenger. You pretty much always have a dragon in this deck. Uh, it's a 3-2 challenger for two. Really strong. I like it a lot. Uh, Akehead Researcher. Um, so, two mana, one three. When I'm summoned, create a ram dragon follower in hand. Uh, I don't run Dragon's Clutch in this version of the deck. One of the main reasons I run this card, because I do like Dragon's Clutch too, is that the way you want to open in this deck is either uh, Herald the Dragons on two into Shivana or Wait Flame on three. Or... You have to have a hand of multiple two drops, like a two drop on turn two and a two drop on turn three, which would be like, you know, like one of these, one of these. If you miss out on playing these, like against aggro or something, you're taking way too much damage. Like there are some variants that just don't play at all, and it's just like Dragon Guard and Herald, or, or just like Dragon Guard plus Larry Shield Bear or something. Then I feel you you need at least the these the nine two drops to have a chance of having two drop on two. Two drop on three to make it through the early game. You need to make it through the early game. So this is a two drop that helps you re like you know refuel for later because it gives you the dragon, which hopefully will be discounted off Herald um, if you draw Herald later in general. But yeah, so I think this is a two drop that can block in the early game, but also give you steam for later. So I like it a lot. Um, yeah. Okay. So next we have Herald of Dragons. As I said, this card lets you curve. I really like this card a lot. You play it on two. You play Shivana on three or White Flame. And then you can play a Screeching Dragon or whatever, so I think this card is uh, very important to the deck, and I hope they buff it to have like more health, but... The thing is, okay, so here's why it's fine with one health, though. Besides there aren't too many one damage pings in the meta, uh, if they don't kill it, you're in an amazing spot. So they don't always kill it, they don't always have the answer. A lot of decks uh, just don't run cards that ping things like that. They don't always draw them. And the other thing is, um, a lot of times it trades even or trades uh, up, I guess. Like, if they calling strike this, they're paying three for a two mana card, then you're fine. Uh, they Mystic Shot it, that's 2 mana for 2 mana, so it's fine. Like, the only real cards that are insane versus that are like, go hard and stuff like that. Like, Vile Feast is good, but it still costs 2. And this fighter's not that big a deal. But like, go hard's not really a thing right now. You see it occasionally, but it's not like a common meta deck, so... It's actually pretty safe to play this a lot of time. Again, I did go on uh, 2 different days, I had like, 5 win streaks with this deck, and... Um, a lot of times it wasn't killed. That probably contributed, but... Um, in this meta, it's totally fine to just slap this down and... Try and go for, um... The, the the four drop on turn three. Also, like, if it's their attack token, they have to play a card before you a lot of time. So, like, turn one, you know, you guys do nothing. Turn two, they'll play Mountain Goat, and you play this. Yes, you take the Mountain Goat, and they get a gem or whatever, but you still, then it's it's fine, because the next turn you get a Shivana on three, or a White Flame on three, and you're, you're good to go. 
So yeah, hit three Herald, three Pale, pretty straightforward combat trick. Give an ally plus one, plus one, Nightfall draw one, so you don't need the Nightfall to refuel. Uh, helps with the three spells, helps win combat trades, and you need a lot of Fury units with the Dragons, all of the Fury and stuff. So if you win the combat trades, you usually get a plus one, plus one in your unit as well. Uh, three Sharp Sight, uh, give an ally plus two, plus two, buckle loose to this round, this card's insane in this deck. As I said, you get the Fury if you get you win the combat trade. Getting plus two plus two is just wins you most combat trades, and being able to block elusives like Zoe and stuff is huge for this deck, so very good card. Uh, three single combat, pretty clear synergy again with the Fury. You kill something, they get a plus one plus one, it's a common theme in the Dragon deck, but also gets uh, really good combat trades in general. It's your removal for things that are threatening, like, you know, like Ezreal, again, Zoe might level up, uh, you know, any, any, any card that's good, you know, you can remove it. So like Twisted Fate, Philia, stuff like that, pretty good. Um, Next is Shiva. Oh, I want to mention also the single combat and sharp side of the buffs all make you heal more with the Sorry Sun Forge. That's how you beat aggro, but we'll get to that in a second. All right, so Shiva Shivana. So she was a 4 4 without Fury, now she's a 3 4 with Fury. I do feel like she's slightly better. I do think she's slightly better. Uh, it's not that noticeable. Like, yeah, she is worse in some scenarios, but the Fury really does matter. Um, it makes it so that they don't want to block her earlier in the game, and if they do, then you get the buffs. You can put a lot of. Um, the Pale Cascade and Sharp Sets on her to buff her. Uh, I don't know. Overall, I just feel like she hits um, this earlier. She kind of like, she like snowballs because the Fury gives her plus one, plus one. And they have to deal with her right away. And on turn three, it's pretty impactful if you play her and they can't deal with her. Or if you, you get like a combat trade. So, very good. Um, I think I've always thought her level up is insanely good. The level up's amazing. Attack can be plus two, plus two. It's a lot. And give you a Flaking Strafing Strike, which is basically a single combat. That's a really good level up. Her chance spell's not the greatest. I rarely use this. Great Ally Challenger. It's permanent, but it costs three. It's really expensive. I only really use this in the late game, and I have the mana to justify it, like left over. Or I like excessive mana, where it's fine to just use the confront. And then you can like kill threats with it, which is good. So it's a good option to have, honestly. Um, I wish you get plus one, plus one dragons or something, but yeah, very, very good. Uh, Shimano's amazing. In this deck. She, she's, she's good. She's good. This is her. Her best deck. I'm not saying she's amazing, but I like her a lot. She's good. Uh, three Slayer Sun Forge. This is how you beat Aggro. This card is cracked. Straight up, this card is in insane um, in every way. It's like a Radiant Guardian that has less counterplay. Uh, doesn't have to see an ally die. Costs one less. Like, I just, you just play it and you heal five. It's insane. Uh, if you have single combat bank, then you can um, heal ten with it. You know, Sharp Sights, Pale Cascades also buff. You can heal six with it, seven with it. You attack with it, they try and fervor, like block fervor to dodge the life steal because it would leave like a little blue blocker thing, and you wouldn't let, heal any life because you're not actually striking. You can still in combat the card being fervored, and then they lose their fervor, and then you know same with glimpse, and then you heal five. So this card is crucial to being aggro, as you can see. A lot of times this deck early game, uh, you don't have a lot of blockers, and if you play Hell and Dragons, you don't want to block with it because then you'll just like lose everything. You kind of just want to take all the damage, and then uh, you're down a lot. You're down like twelve or something. So they open like triple one drop. You play Shivana and or White Flame, you stabilize the board, then you play this and you try to heal all back. This card can easily heal you 10 plus health, so uh, very important for this deck. Very, very good card. Uh, White Flame. This is just another Shivana. So you might, a lot of you guys might be asking why you play White Flame Protector. It's to raise the consistency of seeing Hail Dragon 2 into Dragon on 3. Yes, Shivana is better than this card. But you you need to raise the odds. Like a lot of times you play Herald the Dragons and you don't have Shivana, which is gonna be a lot of time then you're just kind of doing nothing. Your Herald just sitting there. One of the st strengths of the deck is going Herald on two, Dragon on three. So this raises the odds going Herald two on Dragon on three. Uh, I think it's very important to have this card. Otherwise, you won't be doing that, and you'll be, uh, I guess, missing out on the strengths of Dragon decks. So yeah, Herald two, Dragon on three, raise consistency. Uh, still a good card in general, just a four, four, Fury, four. Much discount kind of cost three, very good. All right, Screeching Dragon. This card is absolutely amazing. It's seeing tons and tons of play outside of Dragons. Even cooler to be thematic, I guess. Uh, in Dragons, because you can play it on 4 with Herald. Uh, this card is absolutely amazing. A, f a 4 5 with Challenger here. The 5 health makes it very hard to uh, remove. And it gets plus 1 plus 1 whenever it kills something. Uh, the Fury on it, since it just had the Challenger, it lets you pick what you battle and it gets stronger each time. Uh, very, very strong on 5. Insanely strong on 4. This card is absolutely amazing. Uh, 3 Eclipse Dragon. Alright, so you want to be doing the Daybreak most of the time. So you Daybreak, the extra dragon or Slush, you, you play, it costs two less. So you want to be playing this on seven or six with the Herald of Dragons, and then play Aesol. That, that's basically one of the main reasons this deck really strong, is the ability to play Aesol early. 
You play Aesol, he's one of the strongest finishers in the game right now. One of the best decks in the game is Zoe Aesol, which is just a well-rounded Demacia deck that does Eclipse Dragon to Aesol, and you win. Um, so, yeah, you'll place on, place on 7 and Aesol on 8. Uh, you can use the Nightfall if you, A, don't have Aurelian Soul, or you, you just aren't baking on drawing him because you need refuel. And, again, as I said, you need the refuel. This is basically like a refuel or a late-game card generator, potentially, because dragons usually are late-game uh, cards, and Slush Shields, a lot of them are, like the, you know, the, the Great Beyond and the Mortal Fire and stuff, Phoenix and stuff like that. So, yeah, uh, very good, but usually just for that combo, the into Aesol. One Judgment. I wanted to fit more than one Judgment. I wanted to fit more than one Judgment. Uh... Because this card is really strong in dragons. Being able to get Fury and kill everything is amazing. A lot of times, just having a beefy unit like Shivana or, or like Eclipse Dragon, they attack and you judge them to blow out. It's very good versus, uh, surprisingly, you wouldn't believe it, but aggro. It's dead in the early game, obviously, which is why it's hard to believe. But once you stabilize, aggro is no counterplay to this. You just judge them their whole field and they try and attack and you win. Yeah, it's good versus mid range. It, you know, it's not very good versus like combat like Lee Sin or control like the Spawn Trundle, but uh, in general, it's very good. Last but not least, we have Aurelian Soul. Uh, this is like the best card in the deck. Play and book such a card that costs seven or more, just a win con, Living Legends, Great Beyond, uh, Mortal Phoenix, whatever. And the round start, create a Ram Celestial, all, and also very good. Your cards have a lot of power in the Dragon deck, so it's easy to level it up and then you just win. So you want to play this card early. Again, I played this card in turn six. I opened Triple Hair of the Dragon, Eclipse Dragon into this. But that was very lucky, but it worked and we won. Um, so. I'm not running star shaping because I felt for healing, Slurry Sunforger is like just insane. Uh, I guess I'll go over the cards that I'm not playing real quick. But the main one is star shaping. I guess I'll briefly. I already, already went over Dragon Trial. There are like a lot of just general cards that like, search. It's like Guy and Touch and Space Sketcher and Mountain Go and Chill Bear and stuff. But I think I explained like why I play. I mean, it's a bit quicker. Oh, Dragon's Clutch. Alright, so I actually like Dragon's Clutch in decks more that only run Eclipse Dragon really in Soul. Because in this deck. We need Dragon's Clutch. Okay, let me, let me try this again. The thing that's strong about Dragon's Clutch is being able to guarantee Eclipse Dragon to Relian Soul. That's what's strong with it in my mind. Is you just get Eclipse Dragon, you get Relian Soul, you get the combo, you just win. But this deck runs all kinds of different dragons. So if you like play this and you add like Shivana and Wayflame in your hand, it's not actually that good. It's it's still good, but I'd rather have the Egghead Researcher to give you dragons and like refuel. Because you need the blockers in the early game, and it does something similar to Dragon's Clutch in that way. Like, so, yes, you can play Dragon's Clutch, but it's the expense, right? Like, what do you cut? Uh, I just realized I didn't go over Concerted Strike. Um, okay, Concerted Strike. Pick an enemy, two allies strike it. Okay, so this card's removal. Like, single combat, but you strike them, they don't strike you back. You get Fury. You always want to use it in a way where Fury, uh, get you to buff the card with Fury that you want to be buffed. And then it ups level Shivana up. It gives you reach, or not reach, but it gives you removal. And things, like, outside of combat, you can kill things. Very good card. Sorry. Okay, anyways. Um, yes, that's Shine's Clutch. Hush. Hush is, deep. Hush is pretty good. You can run like two Hush. I, I like Concerted Strike a lot more. I like to see combats and stuff. I think they're more important. Uh, even Judgment's uh, very impactful. Like, as a one of Hush, it's pretty good because Hush is really good and, you know, gives you a lot of. Like, silencing units, especially champions, that you can't do normally. And it can win the game as a one of. But this card's really strong as a one of. This is like a blowout. It can win the entire game. Uh, so I play like one Judgment instead, I guess. They're both, they're both good. You can fit two Hush in here. If you were to cut a card, you can cut down like one Concerted Strike, one Judgment, put two Hush in. If those, if you were to cut a card, that's, that's what I would cut. If you want to make two two slots, Pursuit's actually good to go for game, but again, no space. I want to like hold on the field with this deck. Uh, Strafing Strike is a high consideration. Don't get past that. Here it is. Strafing Strike, another single combat. Um, give you more more reach or not reach, but removal. Fuse Firebrand's actually good. 5-5, five, five, Fury Spell Shield, you play it for 4, it's like actually broken. And with Judgment, they can't beat it. Like, you play this down, you have Judgment in hand, there's nothing they can do to get rid of it, because it has the Spell Shield. Very good, but I, I just, it's hard to fit everything I want in this deck. Um, Radiant Guardians, Sunforge is way better every way. Uh, oh, this card, okay, this card's actually cool. <laughs> I actually think it's a decent card. Uh, 6 mana, 3-5, but I'm selling if you pull a Dragon Rally. I actually like this card a lot. Um... I played a lot in the past when Dragon's First came out. I think this is a high consideration for this card, and I can see it being played in the future with more Dragon support. Um, and then, is there anything else? Mind Splitter is good. The issue like with this card is this used to be like the beat Lee Sin card, and I think Lee Sin's the best deck in the game, and he's pretty popular in the meta. But now, that was before Zoe came out. Now with Zoe out, Zoe can attack. Super cool Star Shard, get Equinox, and just silence it. And then it's like, 
it, it's just an 8 at that point, so at least it'll just kill you. So I lost auto playability, I think, because of that, but it's still good. Um, that's about it. Yeah. Alright, let's get into some games. I bet it's Karma Leeson. This is one of the Leeson variants. I think Leeson's always a bit better, but still pretty good. So we're going to need a lot of strikes in this matchup to deal with Lee Sin, or hope we don't have to draw him. The thing is, we need to get an early game curve. That's that's the number one priority. So you want to get Harold. You always want to mulligan for Harold the Dragon and uh, a four up dragon like Shivana and uh, White Flame. So Shivana, Harold the Dragon is the best opening. Or multiple two drops like Egghead and Dragon Girl Lieutenant so you don't miss out your men in the early game. You don't get pressure too much. We shouldn't worry about being pressured too much against this kind of deck. It's a bit slower. But we still want to see a good early game. So I'm going to full mall. Just because, like, yes, we want to see Herald into this, but it's more important to see the Herald than this. So we're going to full mall for it. All right. Interesting hand. This is a lot of potential. And um, without Sonic Wave, they don't waste to just reach out and kill this. If we draw Shivana, that would be really good. That's fine. So here, I'm going to play this. Well, the Suga Search, we can play this and hope we draw Shivana or White Flame to high roll. Or we can play this. And hope he plays Eye of the Dragon. Uh, I'm gonna play Harold the Dragons. Because if he plays Eye of the Dragon, he can still just have Pill Cascade for it and kill our guy and have Eye of the Dragon live. Okay, that's, that's pretty good for him. Uh, this gives a better high roll to draw into like the Dragon. Okay, we didn't draw it, but it's fine. Alright, no big deal. They don't single combo or anything to kill this, so this is fine. Uh, we'll play this on turn 4, which is very strong. Okay, get that both. Alright. Fine by us. Ooh. Well, we're gonna play Screeching Dragon over Shivana. I know we, it's nice to see Shivana you know, like see the first attack, but straight up this card is more expensive and a better card to impact the board right away. It's kind of abusing the fact we can play a five cost on turn four compared to just playing a four cost on turn four anyway. So um, we really want to get rid of this card, and we really want to. Um, Max out the value of the hero. Like this is insanely strong. I think either dragon is one of the best uh, traps in the game, if not the best trap in the game. So very good. And we're five five here now from the theory. He loses some mana. That's good. Um, now we can play Shivana. We have double sharp sight. A very versatile combat trick. We're very afraid of Lee Sin. Like Lee Sin's a really good card. <laughs> but uh, hopefully he doesn't drop Lee Sin here. It's risky for them to even drop Lee Sin because we could have seen on combat and stuff like that. But we don't. He doesn't know that. Okay, so now we can play Shivana. We have mana up for both of our sharp sites. And now she can start seeing the Dragon Allies do damage. If he's Zenith playing like this, I think he might have Lee Sin? But he still could have Lee Sin and just not want to play it um, this early because he wants to you know, make sure he has protection and stuff for it. At the right time. Halo Dragons is kind of funny here. Because we're able to um, play Aesol earlier. Let's keep up the pressure. This is a lot of attack points. The healing is nice, but it's mostly playing this now to um, put him in a, a bad spot. This is a great, a great chance to do this. So we'll attack with Shivana here to keep the pressure up. I actually think that Screeching Dragon is worth more than Shivana. I mean, it's already a 5 5, and it has Challenger. As much as we love our champions, um, this is a trade we might have to take. I will attempt to win the combat trade with the sharp sight, um, which is definitely possible. Because you'd have to hush this with just three mana just to make an even trade. And pale isn't enough, right? Okay. Question is do I sharp sight again? Or sharp sight again? So we're on, what is this? One, two, we're on turn six. Okay, we're just gonna let this go. I think. We'll save the sharp side for a combat trick later. And we'll play another Herald of Dragons. I think this was uh, the right play. I feel being able to block Lucis is very important for Sparklefly and Zoe. I just don't want to draw Zoe and start getting things. As much as you know, you might think, oh, just kill it and like, save the champion. I, I think it's I think it's more important to um, have have the only ways we're going to lose here is like Zoe getting carried away or a Sparklefly being buffed. He doesn't have Lee Sin, he's a threat. And this is his threat so far, and it's not actually threatening. We can just block that Slayer Sun Forger. He also needs to kill this, and he just showed he can, so. Um, do I can Surge Strike just to save the mana here? I think we're just gonna pass. Um, we need this for, like, Lee Sin. 
All right, Tornado Rally and Soul. Very good, without Clips Dragon. Supernova is a must pick in this matchup. We need as many cards that could potentially kill Lee Sin as possible, which I don't think he has, but still. Same with Karma though, like, we need things that can kill Karma. So we have a few now. Okay. 23 out of 25, we can Sharp Sight to buff something to try and level Rolling Soul. We level Rolling Soul, the game's basically over. Uh, having Supernova go from 9 to 0 is very impactful. Forces denies, that means I still have Mana for Surge Strike. Uh, we're also getting more Celestials each turn. Um, but yeah, imagine we had Herald of the Dragons last turn. Then this would have costed um, 6, which is pretty insane. We were past turn 6, but just the fact that it cost 6 is crazy, right? Mm -hmm. He's in a pretty bad spot. Uh, I definitely think Sharp Sight's worth going for just to get the buff. It's not his attack token, so he can't just like Sonic Wave and kill something by Sharp Sight. He's forced to hush it, but he already used the hush. Alright, we're gonna buff one of these because we don't care if it dies at all. Yeah. Alright. And here, I think we're just gonna pass. Like, Isle of Dragon's not really a threat, as much as I would love to kill this. And I think it's safe to try and kill it, honestly. I just think it's we win if this goes through. There's no reason doing the antsy. I don't really know what the punish is. I'm really a punish, so maybe I should kill it anyway. But we did open pass with the sharp sight, so you can still kill it now if the turn's not over. Bomb. He gets rid of the spell shield. Doesn't matter though. Yeah, we're safe to kill either dragon now because there's no card that could stop this from happening for two mana. Uh, the cool thing about sharp sight pass is he passes back if you just do this, so we left the option open. So not only are we loving Asol, we're also um, killing that now. All right, now we have zero cost Supernova, plus whatever we draw for uh, the next roll of Celestials. Something cool is we could also play Nightfall in this similar Celestial cost zero. Crescent Strike, all right, these cards are really annoying for Lee Sin. We could like bait out a Deny with a, uh, ooh, yeah, Lee Sin's not going through. We basically won at this point. He could have Karma, but we have Concerned Strike and Supernova, of course, and even, you know, really Soul Skies Ascent, really strong. Yeah, GG. <laughs> GG. You've been wonderful, as have I. All right, playing as Deep. I just made a video on Deep. This deck's actually really good. I love these matchups because they're both uh, pretty crazy at the end. Where they have like Nautilus and we have Aurelian Soul. I think in, in general that Aurelian Soul will beat Nautilus uh, in the late game. So I'm going to mole for my two drops. This could be really good to keep just so we get like the Aesol, uh, Crypt Dragon Aesol combo. I kind of want to do it, but I kind of want to open Herald of Dragons and do a 4-drop. I guess we'll, we'll just keep it. This is a pretty well-rounded hand. We'll just we'll just keep these cards. Um, I guess we'll mulch and hope we draw it later for the, the curve. We want to draw like Shyvana or something. But I think keeping Eclipse Dragon is how we'll win in the late game. Like, we, we both have our win cons, right? They go deep, play Nautilus. We play Eclipse Dragon to Aesol. That's how we win. So we'll make sure we have the Eclipse Dragon portion. Alright, cool. We're set for the late game. Just gotta make it there. I'll play Herald of Dragons first because this can enable us to draw the Shivana or Wavelength for turn. And then we just play the dragons really early. That should have been an attack in my opinion. They didn't get there, but it's fine. Um, play Jago Lieutenant so we don't lose our mana. He plays nothing will pass, so he burns uh, the mana here. We, we need to kill that card. And it's also worth playing this to keep our guy alive. This is really a card to hold on the board. Uh, Sea Scarab, the earlier you, you get rid of it, the better. If you don't, it's just going to keep seeing things die over and over again, and it's going to mill all kinds of cards. And then they'll go deep very fast. So he's going to have Vile Feast, is he not a Vile Feast? Which one we pick? Uh, I still want to keep this more than I want to keep this. Like, he should Vile this, I think. Black Sphere, okay. I've been seeing a lot of people playing Black Sphere lately. Um, in the, their deep decks. Alright, pretty good. Cost three. We're all, like, once we make the turn six, and this is still alive, we're good to go. We need to keep it alive for the ASOL also, but as long as this, this is here, we're chilling. This kind of ruins his attack, which is nice for us. Kind of just stalling. We have our win con already, so we don't need to do anything, really. I think open attacking here is pretty good. Um, we could probably just take it, or I guess we'll luck with this, but it, it buffs our unit, so it, it's either way it's out of battle piece range. Okay. 
If he's Maokai, we'll just conserve strike. That's probably the best situation that could happen here. Getting rid of Maokai would be amazing. Laxity. Um. For sure. Let's let that one go. It's not that important of a card. We'll play Sunforger. The healing doesn't matter in this matchup. We just don't want to lose our mana. Uh, we still have Pale here to keep us alive from Vile Feast if you drew Vile Feast. We should be good to go here. Judgment. That that's a pretty strong card for the late game. I think we're already like set to win, but um, if not, we're we're in a great spot. This is a blowout. People will never see this coming. Uh, the late game. Ooh. 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 This is rough. I, I think he might have been holding that. I wasn't paying attention to where it was in his hand. I really want to keep this alive. Um, but I guess the Clipshot on 6 is too good not to do. I just don't want the Sapling. Because we can do really until next turn. So I can start it now? Yeah, we, we probably need to kill this, honestly. It's way too important. We'll just do this one turn later. Because, like, either way, we're doing this one turn later, whether we're using the Unconcerted or um, this is dying. And this way, he mills less. And just getting him out, guys, a, a big deal, regardless. Alright, so next turn, we base soul. Could have got this turn. So, in, in spirit, we got it this turn, but it's fine. We have a lot of mana. We can use uh, Steel Combat or Pale. This is a great draw. Very versatile. Vengeance. Totally fine. Totally fine. We don't want to waste our single combat because this could like remove threats. That's that's a big deal. We can rid of Blue Wanderer so it doesn't heal back later when we're like uh, fighting for tempo. Place that one health doesn't really matter because yeah, he could whale, but like this isn't really the win con, right? This is the win con. We need to get protection for this. Save removal things that actually matter. It's gonna come down to playing threats. Like if he has multiple Abyssal and stuff, we're gonna need to deal with that. There was an argument for single combat in this right away. I maybe should have done that. Alright, we'll get Living Legends. This card is uh, If you don't know what this card does, fill your hand for ramps, clean slash shields, or fill your mana. That's cool. Alright, Maokai actually is a threat. We need to get rid of this card. Um, or he'll start getting deep very fast. He's already almost deep, but the saplings are a big deal too. They're really annoying if blocking each turn. 17. Alright. Get a Celestial. Immortal Phoenix. Jeez. It's a good one. I do love an audience. Alrighty. Uh, if we play this, we're not quite leveled up yet. If we play this, we are leveled up. Let's go for the level on Aurelian Soul. I, don't, I probably should play this first in case he like whales or something. But I don't want to know we have a white flame projector. Being able to play Big Dragon is pretty good. I guess he goes for both for Lieutenant. Either order is fine. Okay. Um, this heals. So I guess we'll do this one. Jeez, bro. Jeez. Alright, 25 out of 25. The yeah, end we just win. Okay. <laughs> this game's over. So, when you play Living Legends with Aurelian Soul, I hope he doesn't surrender. Then every single Celestial you'll get costs zero, which is absolutely broken. Absolutely broken. Now they'll pay attention. Is your mana Phoenix, by the way? We, we can't get the... Our board's too full to get the, um, the elusive, which kind of sucks. But we wanna, you want to empty your hand as much as possible before you play Living Legends. Because you want to make max value out of it. We can get a, a field full of Celestials in, in Sky Sun Flex Zero. I hope he doesn't surrender. I really hope he doesn't surrender. I, I want to get this off so bad. This card is such a sick animation, too. Don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. Don't do it. Just play it out. Just play it out. You can still win, man. Just play it out. How many of Judge? Oh, okay. He definitely can't win, but he doesn't know that. Here, I'll block to humor him so he doesn't surrender. Like, he wants to go deep. If I don't block this, he might surrender. <laughs> That's my strat. So I would never normally block this in a rank game, because obviously, like, he wants to go deep right now. That's, like, the whole point of this. But I don't want him to surrender, so... I want to play it out. So again, we're emptying our hands so we can get, um... 
the Celestials. Just play Nautilus, dude. You got this. You got this, man. It's all you. Let you go deep. You're good. Just let me out. Yeah. Ah, oh, dude, my Phoenix. Damn. The skies darken with their approach. All right. All right, so this costs zero. Uh, this costs zero. I'm reading the Star Shavana. Dragons and Celestials. Oh, this costs zero also. We want to play as many of these as we can so that we get a really cheap Skies Ascent. We get Sky sent off. <laughs> For three mana, we get to deal 15 to his entire field. And that's the sickest animation. I love this animation. It's so, it's so cool. Alright. Play anything else we have comment. Um, we might as well use this now to save, like. I guess we'll put it on him so he gets overwhelmed with the storage. We should have actually played this last so it got, it got more attack. Uh, I guess plus one for each Celestial. I just wanted to play cards. I thought it was gonna surrender, so I wanted to play my coolest cards first. All right, GGs. As you can see, that this deck has a lot of strengths. Even stronger if you open a Herald into like Shivana. Uh, but Rallian Soul is a force to be reckoned with, and I think that he's what makes the deck so strong. Um, yeah, the deck's amazing. I think it's a ton of fun, and I would give it a try. You can see we do some pretty cool stuff with the Celestials, Rallian Soul. Even Shivana gets going. I love the ramping with the the Herald. Um, we still have to play where we played Screeching Dragon for 4 instead of 5, and we just killed another dragon straight up. That was really good. But if you have any questions about the deck, feel free to say in the comments. I stream every day at 6.30 p.m. EST. Uh, High-ranked master uh, games, you know, hit rank 1 every season. So feel free to uh, watch there live where I play these decks, or tell me what you guys want to see in the future of my videos. So I'll catch you guys later. Peace.